Welcome to the Five Week Linguist Show. If you want to learn a language or you teach a language, you've come to the right place. Join Janina each week for tips, resources, and advice for making engaging language learning happen anytime, anywhere. Welcome to the Five Week Linguist Show. This week we're going to talk about learning a language for your trip over the next five weeks. The trip that you're probably not taking, but you'll take some time in the future. And even if you don't know when, or you can't even imagine when you're going to travel again, I wanted to share with you some really specific tips to get speaking a language fast. Oh, I love language for travel. It's definitely one of my very favorite contexts. And you'll see, I think I have 11 different podcasts of language for travel and beginners of, of files that I made um, years ago in my travels and in my my life abroad to, to learn language for travel. And what I love most about language for travel is that everything's served up in in, in really meaningful chunks, meaning you're not going to see a whole bunch of, you know, separate words together. Everything is geared towards language for communication. Getting around, eating, emergencies, going to the police, going to the embassy, hotels. And even if you think, well, I'm not traveling, I just want to learn how to speak. They tend to be very survival and question and answer type tasks. So it's really easy to get communicating with people really quickly. And you'll learn all the grammar and vocabulary in context. And I I can't emphasize how powerful this is enough. Focusing on language for travel is probably one of the smart, the, the fastest ways to get communicating. So the first step that I want you to, to do is think about the, the language that you want to learn for the trip that you eventually take or the language that you can really make great progress in over the next five weeks and over the next year or six months, whenever we can travel again. Is it a language that's close to English or is it a language that's really different, you know, Russian or Arabic, which is even more difficult? So I refer often in a lot of my writing about the the, the Foreign Service Institute hours and all the research that they've done. And to hit a quote unquote fluent B2, high B2 level, you need like 75 to 750 to 1,000 hours of focused, immersive input and practice to hit that really very basic level. And then a language like Chinese that's Mandarin, you know, three times as difficult three times as long, three to four times as long, different writing system, different culture. And what I think is really the important takeaways here, don't get discouraged by the time periods is just knowing that being aware of it. And I also like to, to, to track time. So it, it really helps you set, set yourself up for, for success. Cause you know, if you put a few hours in And you don't feel like you've made any progress, it can be really discouraging. But if you know that the language you're trying to learn is really different from your native language, it can really give you a boost and and be really realistic with your goals. I think that's really important. And so think about what you want to be able to do over the next five weeks. So, so when people say, I just want to have a conversation, I, I, I think, well, what? Do you want to have a survival conversation? Do you want to be able to order at a restaurant? Do you want to be able to talk about yourself? What is it that you really want to be able to do? And if you don't know anything in a language, I'm going to refer you always to those to to phrase books, right? Because it's going to have all the survival language in. So so if you eventually want to have a quote unquote conversation, this is a great place to start. Lots of questions and answers. So think about the next five weeks. If you're an absolute beginner of your your travel place, think about how much time do you have each day? For beginners, 
Level A, I never recommend more than 30 minutes at a time. It can be really mentally exhausting. And you do that for a few days, you will want to quit. And you won't you won't succeed. It's much better to have a sustainable plan that you can do over the long term. So I really love a lot of audio programs, particularly Pimsleur for, for apps. But I'm going to share with you my free task list. And you can make your own phrase books. And I'm also going to share some links to, to Language for Travel and Beginners. And I've done a lot of these themes. I've done a lot of the work for you. And in these books, there are there's linked audio and tons of different themes for you to be able to consider. And you can also decide what your your materials are going to be. Again, I, I've provided you with some travel and beginner activities. You can also go and get a phrase book, right? Think about like Berlitz or Lonely Planet. Again, you can make your own um, using Google Translate, which I want to say is not a completely reliable source. It can um, very it makes a lot of mistakes. However, I want to give Google credit where it's due and and what's good about it. They create. They're constantly scanning documents that were translated by humans, and so they're always checking. They're 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 always improving, and you can offer them suggestions if you find something you know is wrong. You can you know you you can. You can offer feedback on that, which is great. And then you can take those phrases and they have sound and you can put them into a Google Sheet. I don't think it's a great way, but I think it's something. And if you have absolutely no money, you know, and you want to make something really personalized, you don't have any money to spend on that kind of thing. It's really, really useful. So consider... Over the next five weeks, I would pick one to two of the themes to learn. So, for example, a theme being a context, getting around, or meeting and greeting. And I would dedicate myself to learning this and making a big fool out of myself. That's really important. So some of the ways with the the, the phrase book, I would listen to the phrase book and, and, and read the phrases and read the translations, but get a notebook. I love to do something called vocabulary columns. And basically I would take all the words from that theme and I would write them down in a column in my notebook. And then I would try to recall them in my, my own language. And then I would go back to the, the phrase book that I'm sharing with you, the links, if you, if you're interested and go back or your phrase book, and I would go back and I would check my answers. Then I would fold it over and I would recall back in the target language. This can be really challenging. So in the first column, you're trying to recall in your own language, right? You, you've written down everything in the target language and you try to recall in your own language. Recognizing is easier. I would study for a while and then fold the paper over and try to recall in the new language. And then I would check in on the ones that I didn't know. Keep practicing those, right, by folding the paper over until you can easily recall that set of words in the last column. And then do as the next day, do a review. It's probably about a half an hour of study, and you can easily recall them at the end, right? So practice just about a half an hour a day. Um, pick a two to three themes a week, and... By the end, you'll be travel ready. Lastly, I want to ask you to track your time. And, and I, I have a time tracker for you. You're welcome to download. But you can also just do it really informally. I did 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Because you're going to see there's going to be a definite correlation between the time that you invest and your outcomes. Until next time. 
Thank you for listening to the Five Week Linguist Show with Janina Klimas. Join us each week here and visit us at reallifelanguage.com slash reallifelanguageblog for more resources for learning and teaching languages. 